Here, I have divided this tutorial into six main parts. How the circuit works, PCB design and ordering, assembling the transmitter PCB, designing an enclosure for transmitter and attaching it with the PCB, assembling the receiver PCB, and testing an application. I have prepared timestamps for each section, allowing you to watch only what you need. How the circuit works. Part of this circuit is HT12E encoder and HT12D decoder. The HT12E and HT12D are a pair of complementary metal oxide semiconductor ICs designed for use in wireless communication systems. The HT12E is the transmitter responsible for encoding the data you want to send. It takes two types of inputs, address bits. The address bits are used to ensure that the data is transmitted to the correct receiver in systems where multiple receivers are present. Typically, eight address bits are used, allowing for 256 unique addresses. Data bits. These represent the actual information you want to transmit. Usually, four data bits are available, which can encode 16 different values. An external resistor is connected to the OSC1 and OSC2 pins to set the oscillator frequency, which determines the rate at which data is transmitted. The transmission is enabled by setting the TE pin to low. When TE is high, the transmission is disabled, and the output remains high impedance, meaning it does not interfere with other signals. Once TE is activated, the HT12E encodes the address and data bits into a serial format. This includes synchronization bits, address bits, data bits, and a stop bit to ensure proper synchronization with the decoder. The encoded serial data is then output from the D out pin. The HT12D is the receiver responsible for decoding the received signal. The HT12D receives the serial data through its DIN pin. This data is expected to be in the format generated by the HT12E. Like the HT12E, the HT12D uses an external resistor connected to its OSC1 and OSC2 pins to set the oscillator frequency. Upon receiving the serial data, the HT12D first checks the synchronization bits and then compares the received address, bits with its own address pins. If the addresses match, the decoder proceeds to decode the data bits. Otherwise, it ignores the data. Once the address is validated, the HT12D decodes the serial data back into the original four data bits and presents them on its output pins. The VT pin goes high to indicate a valid transmission has been received and decoded. This can be used to trigger further actions in the receiver circuit. This is a simple demonstration of how this works. This is the data transmitter line. Both ICs are set to the same address. Let's see what happens if we change the address. You can observe that the receiver does not respond to the transmitter signals. Also, let's explore this configuration. I added two HT12D decoder ICs to the receiver side, using the same signal line for both ICs. You can see the LEDs connected to IC1 light up because its address matches that of the HT12E encoder. If we match the address of IC2, the LEDs connected to that IC will light up as well. Finally, let's see what happens if I change the address of the HT12E encoder so that it doesn't match with IC1 or IC2. You can see that none of the LEDs work. This demonstrates the working principle of this system. I believe you now have a good understanding of it. Instead of this wire, we use RF modules in wireless transmission. Our circuit represents a straightforward enhancement of this concept. Here I used two HT12 encoders with two different addresses. This slide switch is used to power up one IC at a time. These two LEDs indicate the power on state. Here I used two TL0072 ICs to capture the end positions of joystick modules. TL0072 IC is a high-speed dual op-amps integrated IC. 
Here I used STX882RF transmitter and SRX882RF receiver for wireless communication. They have a good working range of about 100 meters. In the receiver circuit, same addresses are used like the transmitter. Here I use transistors as switches and not gates. You can obtain 5 volt signal from the output pins. Working voltage of HT12E and HT12D is 2.4 volts to 12 volts, but working voltage of SRX882RF receiver and STX882RF transmitter is 5 volts. So I powered up both circuits in 5 volts using LM7805 voltage regulator. PCB design and ordering. I used EZDA to design my PCB. After spending some time with it, I found this shape to be the most suitable. After a few operations, I completed my transmitter PCB. Then, I proceeded to design the receiver circuit. My goal was to keep the receiver PCB as small as possible. Eventually, I achieved this simple shape with these dimensions. Next, I exported the Gerber files for both PCBs and uploaded them to PCBWay for fabrication. PCBWay is the world's leading PCB manufacturing company, providing high-quality services at reasonable prices. After a few days, I received my package. Everything was fine and exactly as I expected. Assembling the transmitter PCB. Don't be confused about my transmitter PCB. It is different from what I showed in the designing stage. When I first designed it, I didn't think to add indicating LEDs. But in my new design, I have added two indicating LEDs. Solder all the components labeled on the PCB. When you solder the toggle switch, pay attention to keep it vertically. Do not directly solder the ICs to the PCB. Use an IC base for this purpose. If you cannot find joysticks, you can obtain them by desoldering from Arduino joystick modules. When soldering the joystick, make sure to avoid any gap between the PCB's top surface and the component's bottom surface. If there is space, the PCB will not fit properly within the enclosure. Okay, we have finished making the transmitter PCB. Designing an enclosure for transmitter and attaching it with the PCB. First, I exported the 3D model of the transmitter PCB. Then, I uploaded it to Fusion 360 and projected the boundaries onto the sketch plane. After performing numerous operations and several trials and errors, finally I reached to this design. This design will be comfortable in our hands and fit well. Finally, before 3D printing, I conducted a sectional analysis to ensure everything was okay. If you want a tutorial on how to design an enclosure for your own PCB using Fusion 360, please leave a comment about it.
Then, I exported the STL files of the design for 3D printing. Then, I opened them with the Cura slicer, setting it up as follows. Mainly, I set the layer height to 0.2mm for a standard finish, but if you desire better finishing and surface quality, try a smaller value. I set the infill density to 100%, enabled supports, and chose the tree structure for the support because it is easy to remove. After spending about 15 hours on 3D printing, I obtained my enclosure. The 3D print left some parts unfinished, so I performed several finishing operations to achieve that level of completion. Before fixing the PCB, cut the terminals close to the screw support. I designed to fix the PCB with the enclosure using M3 screws. Thus I inserted M3, brass hot melt insert nuts into the supports. Similarly, I intended for the enclosure halves to be joined using M2 screws, so I inserted M2, brass hot melt insert nuts into the columns. Now all we have left to do is the power supply part. Here, I inserted the switch and created this simple circuit inside the enclosure. I added two indicating LEDs separately, but you don't need to do this. In my new design, I have placed two LEDs on the PCB, and they correctly align with the enclosure holes. Okay, let's finish our enclosure. I placed 1mm diameter holes for the battery cover. It is difficult to create such a small feature using a 3D printer, so we should manually make the hole. Assembling the receiver PCB. Don't be confused by the direction of placing transistors. Here, I made a mistake by using the wrong footprints, so I am placing the transistors like this. I have corrected that mistake in my PCBs, and you will receive the correct one.
Testing and Applications. Here, I simply created this circuit to test the system. I connected all the LED's negative terminals, and then connected them to the ground pin through a 150 ohm resistor. Now, I've connected the LED's positive terminals to each channel. You can power this up with any voltage between 6 volts and 30 volts. When you first power up the receiver, all the LEDs will light up. To fix this, power on the transmitter and toggle the channel selection switch left and right. Now, it is ready to transmit data. Using this toggle switch, you can switch between the first four channels and the second four channels. I want to give a very brief introduction about the transmitter. I use two joystick modules, but you can control the entire system with just one joystick. The reason for adding a second joystick is that it helps in different situations. Consider driving an RC car. While going forward or backward, if we need to turn, it's easier to use two joysticks together rather than doing so with just one. Like this. This configuration may help you in various situations. I created this four motor system using two motor controllers. Let's see how it works. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also, like and follow my social networks. It will encourage me to create more interesting content.